Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently, we are in the 7th module of our hands on machine learning course and this 7th module is all about building machine learning models from scratch. So, the first model that we have chosen is a simple linear regression model and in my previous videos, I have explained you what is the intuition and math behind the linear regression model and uh, how to deduce the gradient descent for a linear regression model. So in this video, let's try to implement all those things in this Python code and let's try to build a linear regression model from scratch in Python. So this is the agenda for today's video. So once we create this model, once we complete this model, we will use a sample data set in order to uh, try this model out. So here I have this a salary uh, data set. So I'll just open this in a notepad. So this particular data set contains uh, some amount of data. It contains about 30 data points. So it contains uh, years of experience. So the number of years of experience for a person and their corresponding salary. Okay. So what is their uh, salary per month? So a data set like this. So once we create our model, we will use this data and we will try to fit this, uh, fit our linear regression model to this data and we will try to make new predictions. Okay. So this is what we are going to do. So once we train our model, we will uh, try to uh, plot the model with the test data. So this is the thing that we will do. Now let's uh, go into this linear regression code. So as we know that uh, we have discussed previously that the equation of a line is y is equal to mx plus c where m is the slope of the line and uh, c is the intercept of the line. So you should watch my previous videos if you uh, don't understand those things. So I'll give the link of those previous videos where I have explained you about linear regression. So you can watch those videos before coming into one so that you can have a better understanding of this video. So it's y is equal to mx plus c. So here I have replaced m with w and I have replaced c with uh, v. So we know that m is the slope and instead of m I have used w and instead of a c intercept I have used a v. So I am just changing the notation. So this is because in machine learning we often deal with this kind of notation which are w and v where w means the weight of the model and v is the bias of the model. Okay. Now uh, there is a separate explanation for weights and biases. So in my next video I will explain you what is meant by this weight and bias. But for no, for linear regression, just think that uh, weight is nothing but the slope of your model and B is your intercept of your model. So we will be having a deeper explanation in the next video. But for now, just uh, think uh, the weight as the slope of your line and the B as our uh, bias as the intercept of the line. So that's enough for now. So why will be our dependent variable? So in our data set, the dependent variable is salary because we are finding the salary based on the work experience. So salary will be our dependent variable because it depends on the years of experience and the X will be our independent variable. In this case, the independent variable is uh, years of experience, the number of years. So it will be like uh, uh, salary is equal to W into number of years of experience plus B which is the bias. So this is the equation of a linear regression model and we need to build this uh, equation uh, in Python so that we can build a linear regression. Now uh, in my previous video on uh, gradient descent for machine learning, I have explained you how you can get the best uh, parameters. So these two are called as the parameters of the model, the weights and bias. So in that video, I explained you how to get the best uh, bias and weight for your model or how to get the best parameters of your model so that uh, you have a very less loss function. So this is the uh, formula for gradient descent. Gradient descent is an optimization algorithm used for minimizing the loss function in various machine learning algorithms and it is used for updating the parameters of the learning model. So in this case the parameters are weight and bias or it is slope and intercept. Okay. So we need to find the best parameters. So how we will find the best parameter is we will try to uh, deduce or we will try to uh, measure the loss function for different kinds of parameter and we will try to see which parameter, which set of parameters that has the least loss function or the cost function. So I just go to my uh, PPT which I have uh, you know explained to you last time. So loss function is what is the distance between your predicted value and your true value. Okay. So if, so what we will do is we will start with a random initial value of a slope and intercept and then we gradually try to step down the curve where we have a minimum loss function value. So this point is called as the global minimum and at this point we have a very less loss function. So I have explained to you all these concepts in my previous videos. So we uh, use this gradient descent algorithm to start from this uh, random um, parameter value and we will come to this uh, optimization the best parameter value where we will have a very less loss function. So that's what I have mentioned in this gradient descent definition and this is how we will update our weights. So uh, weights and bias. So w is equal to w minus alpha into dw where uh, w is the initial parameter and the w uh, this w is uh, the uh, w in the left hand side is the updated uh, weight okay and alpha is the learning rate and dw is how much your loss function changes when your uh, weight changes. So I'll explain you in a minute what is meant by this. First, let's try to understand about this learning rate. 
So learning rate is a tuning parameter in an optimization algorithm that determines the step size at each iteration while moving toward a minimum of a loss function. So let's come here. So in this gradient descent curve, so when you plot the parameter and loss function, you will get a U-shaped curve and we need to step down this curve in order to reach this global minimum. So uh, an optimum learning, uh, learning rate is required to uh, you know pay this step. So if you have a very uh, a larger learning rate, so this step will be drastic. So you will uh, move from this point to this point in a very faster way. So whereas if you have a very small learning rate, the movement from this point to this global minimum will be very less. Okay, so it is very important for us to have an optimum learning learning rate. So the learning rate will often be in the magnitude of 0 0.1, 0 0.01, or 0 0.001, and so on. So it depends on the data set that we have and the model we have. So it is the, generally the magnitude that we use, which is about 0 0.01 or something. Okay, so. That is about learning rate where we will try to step down the curve to reach the global minimum. So that is uh, given by this alpha. Now let's try to understand about dw and db. So this is the formula to get a dw and db. So uh, now, so dm, so dm is nothing but dw because we have replaced a m with w, right? So it is the uh, differentiation. So we need to differentiate cost function with respect to slope. It is how much your cost function changes when your slope changes and so on. So uh, refer my previous videos for a detailed explanation. So I cannot go into deep into these concepts for now. Just understand that this is uh, the formula for DW and this is the formula for DB. Uh, okay. So yeah, so DW is equal to minus two divided by N summation of XI into YA minus YA prediction. Here XI is uh, the feature that we have. In this case, the feature we have is the number of uh, years of experience and YA is the salary, the true salary and YA prediction is the uh, prediction made by our model. So we use our model to make predictions given the years of experience. So we need to find the difference between so this YA prediction and YA and we, we have to multiply it with uh, XI which is the number of years of experience and we need to do the summation for all these data points. So totally uh, we have uh, 30 data points right so we need to find the difference for all the 30 data points so the predicted value and the true value of salary and we need to multiply it with x so in this case x is the number of years of experience and we just need to multiply it with 2 and divided by uh, n okay so after taking summation so this is the formula for w and this is the formula for b so this is weight or the slope of our model and this is b is the bias or uh, uh, the intercept of our model so we just need to uh, implement these three equations so first is the equation of the line then we need to uh, uh, you know include this formula or this equation which is updating the parameters of our model so in this case the parameters are weights and bias and finally uh, we have to set some learning rate and then we have this dw and db so this is how much your cost function changes when your uh, w changes and so on okay so now let's try to build this model so first I'll import my NumPy library. So NumPy library is the only library that we will use to build this model. So importing NumPy library. Okay, so let's import NumPy SNP. So NumPy library is very useful for creating NumPy arrays. So I'll run this. So this is in Google Collaboratory. I, I hope you know about Google Collaboratory. So we will do all our Python programming in Google Collaboratory. So in order to run this cell, you just need to press shift plus enter. So this will uh, run this cell and go to the next one. And now let's create our linear regression model. So I'll just make a text here as linear regression. Okay. So we will create this linear regression in a class. So just a second okay now what we are going to do is we are going to create linear regression as an object so how we will create the, our how we will do that is by using the keyword class so class linear regression so let's name our model as linear regression so i'll just name this as linear underscore regression so it should be a single word now class in python is used in order to create the template for your object okay so just understand that so in python we can create uh, objects using this class keyword and we need to we can you know uh, include multiple functions within this uh, class so whenever we are training our machine learning model uh, let's say that we are importing a logistic regression so what we will do is we will import logistic regression from uh, the sklearn library and then we will use logistic regression dot fit or logistic regression dot predict and so on similarly within this linear regression we need to uh, 
include some functions like uh, fitting the linear regression model and predict uh, function and so on. So that's what we are going to do. So inside this linear regression, we need to include all those functions. So the other way of calling the function is methods. So functions and methods are uh, both are the same. Okay. So now we need to include these functions. So we need some set of uh, important functions. The first function that we need is init. So init means initiation function. So in this, we need to initiate some parameters for our uh, learning algorithm. So this is the first function that we will deal with. And the next function that we will deal with will be a fit function. So this fit function is used to train our uh, linear regression model with the data set that we have. So in the case of uh, that we have taken, so here the data set we have is years of experience and salary, right? So we will fit this data to our linear regression model and we will do that part of the code in a diff uh, fit. So def means define. So it is defining a function. So this is a defining fit uh, function and uh, we need to mention the parameters in this parenthesis. So let's come to this uh, parameters things later. So let's, let's first uh, discuss what are the functions that we need for our linear regression model. So first is the init function, which is to initiate the parameters. Next is the fit model, sorry, the fit uh, function in order to fit the data to our uh, model. And then we need uh, updation function. So def update weights update weights. So in this case, we will update, uh, update our uh, parameters. So as you can see here, we have this uh, gradient descent formula, right? So which is used to update the parameters, the weight and bias, and we will create that function in this update weights, uh, weights function. And finally, so that should be, okay, follow me. Now, the last function that we have is predict okay so this is the function that we will use where if you give the number of years of experience our linear regression model can give you the salary that the person makes so these are the four uh, functions that we need for our linear regression model so uh, one second okay so here there should be a parenthesis as well i just missed it so so there is so we have this linear regression uh, class or linear regression object and we have these four uh, function so first is the init uh, function which is to initiate the parameters and then we have the fit function which is used to fit the data to our model and then update weights function which is used to update the weights based on the gradient descent and finally we have the predict function which is used to predict the uh, uh, salary of a person depending on their numbers of years of experience now what we will do is let's uh, try to complete uh, these functions one by one so the first parameter which you should have in all the functions within your classes self. So you should include self as your first parameter in all the cases. So init self and fit self. So I'll explain you in a minute what is meant by this self. So update page self and uh, define predict self. So whenever we are creating a class within the functions of this class, we need to include this self as our first parameter within this function. So what is meant by this uh, self? So I just go to the next cell. So let's say that we are uh, importing our logistic regression model from SKLM. So what we will do generally is, so we will create uh, an instance of a logistic regression model. Let's say that uh, model is equal to logistic regression. Okay, so logistic regression and you can import uh, logistic regression from from sklearn dot linear model import logistic regression. So this is how we will uh, use logistic regression model which is already pre-made in uh, sklearn. So in this case, we are going to build by ourselves the linear regression model. In this case, we are using a pre-made logistic regression model. So we will uh, you know, import this logistic regression model from sklearn.linear model. Then what we will do is we will take one instance of this logistic regression model. So I have created a variable here called as model and I'm loading the instance of this logistic regression. So once we complete this linear regression code, what we will do is, so we will create uh, some instance of this model. So we will uh, do something like, uh, just a second. So we will create an instance as model is equal to linear regression with parenthesis. So this will be, this is how we will uh, call our linear regression model. So model is equal to linear regression. So this is nothing but one instance of this linear regression model. Now this term uh, model, so, or you can call this as the value of your instance. 
So this uh, value, which is model, will go into this cell. So whenever you call this a fit function, so the uh, the class will understand it as define fit model. Okay, so it will take the uh, parameters from this model. So just try to understand one thing. So we are uh, importing the function, or we are importing the object using an instance, and this instance. Uh, instance value is given in the self so that's what you need to understand so yes we need to uh, include this self as the first parameter in all the functions that we create in our class so i'll just remove these things now let's uh, create our parameters so the parameters we need are the learning rate and the number of iterations that we are going to do so let's come to this init function so self comma learning rate so i have explained you what is meant by this learning rate so this will be our second parameter and the third parameter will be number of iterations okay so what is meant by this number of iterations so whenever we are doing gradient descent what we will do is so in order to reach to this global minimum we will try to uh, run our model through the data again and again so the model will go through the data again and again so that is called as iteration so iteration is nothing but doing something repeatedly so we want the number of iterations so we need to mention the number of times the model has to go through the data so this will be one parameter and this will be the learning rate so i have already explained you what is meant by this learning rate so it is a tuning parameter uh, which determines the step size of uh, the iteration so these are the two parameters that we have so this learning rate and number of uh, iterations are called as the hyper parameter for our model and this weight and bias or slope and intercept is called as model parameters. So these two are the model parameter whereas the learning rate and uh, the number of iterations is called as the hyper parameters. So that is a uh, model parameter. So these two are model parameters and these two are hyper parameters. So we will set this manually. So we will manually set the learning rate and the number of iterations for our model. Let's say we can uh, give the number of iterations as 100. So 100 means the model will go through the data 100 times uh, or you can also set it to 1000 so 1000 means the model goes through the data 1000 times so we also manually set the learning rate as 0 0.01 or 0 0.001 and so on but we cannot set the weight and bias or uh, the slope and intercept manually so this is determined by our model based on the data set that we have so these are called as the model parameter and these are called as the hyper parameter because these are the things that are given manually out of the model whereas these two uh, parameters are within the control of the model so these are model parameters and hence these are hyper parameters so these are the two parameters that we have and we need to initiate these parameters in this class now what we will do is so we need to mention this as self dot learning rate. So self dot learning rate is equal to learning rate, and uh, the next one is self dot number of iterations is equal to number of iterations. So this is how you initiate the uh, parameters. So the parameters here are learning rate and number of iterations. So self dot learning rate means model dot learning rate is equal to the learning rate value and the self dot number of iterations is uh, the number of iterations that we are going to give. So this is the first function that we need. So we won't uh, explicitly use this init function. So we won't be using this init uh, outside this particular class. So we will use only this fit function and predict function outside this class in order to uh, train our uh, train our data. But uh, this init and uh, this update weights will be used implicitly within this class. Okay, so that's what you need to understand. Fit and the predict are the function which we will use outside this uh, particular class. So these are the first uh, two parameters. So this is the first part of our code, which is to initiate the parameters that we have, which are the learning rate and the number of iterations. Now we need to create this fit function. Okay. So I just uh, make a statement here as initiating the parameters, initiating the parameters. So in this case, the parameters are the learning rate and the number of iterations. Okay, so this is the first function that we created in it. So it should be uh, preceded with two underscore and uh, after the init word, we need to uh, include two underscore. So this is this is how you will create any class. So this is our first step. And now let's try to uh, create the function for fitting the data to our model. So this will be, so it shouldn't come here. Okay, one second. 
ओके नाउ वी नीड टू फिट आर डेटा टू आर मॉडल सो यर द पैरामीटर्स दैट वी और यर द पैरामीटर्स दैट वी शुड इंक्लूड आर सेल्फ कमा एक्स एंड वाई वेयर एक्स विल बी आर number of years of experience and y will be our salary so whenever we are fitting the data we need to give both the uh, x axis values and the y axis value right here the x axis value will be years of experience and y axis value will be salary so we need to uh, include those two uh, parameters inside this fit function which are x and y now let's try to uh, carry on with this now we need to mention the number of parameters and uh, the number of features that we have so number of training examples and number of features so what is meant by this number of training examples so number of training example is the number of data points that we are going to use for the training so that is very important so we need to mention here that how many data points that we are uh, using from this data set so that is given by this number of training example and the number of features is the number of x that we have so in this case we have only one feature which is the years of experience so in in several data set there will be multiple features so you will have 10 features 20 features and so on let's say for example uh, let's say that we are building a machine learning model to measure the blood sugar level of a person in that case we have several features like uh, Uh, what is their blood glucose level, or what is the like? Uh, what is the amount of food that they eat, and what is the calorie intake they have? So that can be one parameter, and uh, the other parameter can be, or other feature can be, uh, whether they do exercise or not, and so on. So these are called as features of the data. So in this case, we have only one feature, but in more in in several data sets, we have multiple features. So we need to mention them as well. So number of training examples and a number of features. Now. Uh, we need to mention them as self dot m and self dot n so n m will be our number of training examples and n will be the number of features so if let's say that we have 30 data points in our data set so we are using 30 training uh, data uh, training data points so in that case m will be 30 and n is the number of features so in this case the number of features we have is only one because like we we don't include uh, salary as the feature so salary is the target variable whereas this years of experience is the feature so in this case n will be 1 so m is the number of training example we have the number of uh, data points that we are going to use and n is the number of features so this is given by x dot shape so yes will be x will be our training data features and uh, it will be in the form of an array so just look at this first column so here what is the shape of x so the shape of x will be 30 into 1 let's say that there are totally 30 data points so just forget about this salaries just think that uh, this salary is not there so this first column will be taken as your x and your second column salary will be taken as your y so what is the shape of this x so the number of rows uh, in your uh, x will be 30 and the number of columns your x has is only 1 so it will be a 30 cross 1 matrix like it is like 30 that means it contains 30 data points but it contains only one features so that is the x dot shape so you can just i'll just make a statement here as it is the number of rows and columns where the number of rows represent m which is the number of training examples that we have and n is the number of columns we have so in this case we have only one column right so it is uh, number of rows and columns so m represents the number of rows or the number of training example and n represents the number of columns or the number of features that we have now we need to initiate the weights so i have explained you right so we will randomly initialize the parameters for our model so the parameters are nothing but the slope and intercept or you can call it as weight and bias so we need to initiate this uh, value so this particular point so we, let's do that now so this is initiating the weight and bias bias of our model so you just need to include self so it's self dot so self is nothing but model so if you don't understand why we are using the self just don't worry i'll just complete this code uh, completely and explain you in a recap on why we are using the uh, using that self so at that point it will make more sense so it's self dot w so w will be our weight so self dot w is equal to np dot zeros self dot n 
So I want to create a matrix or I want to create an array with uh, these many uh, features or these many columns. So n is the number of columns, right? So I want to create a matrix with uh, n number of uh, columns and all the values in this uh, array should contain zeros. So that is how we will initiate uh, values. So often we initiate the parameters with the value zero. So now let's initiate the value of bias as zero. So self dot b is equal to zero. So if you just look, you know, uh, take a look at this clearly, we are creating a numpy array for weights, but we are just giving only one single value for bias. It's like creating a, an array or a matrix for W, but we are just creating only one value for bias. So we are, the reason we are doing this here is, uh, as I have told you earlier, a data set may contain different number of uh, features. So it may contain 10 features, 20 features and so on. And each feature has a weight associated with it. Hence, uh, the weight will be a matrix, whereas a model has only one bias value. So this uh, weight can be a matrix, whereas the bias can be zero. Sorry, the bias can be a only one value. So we are initiating the weights in the form of a numpy array and we are initiating the bias value as only uh, zero. Now we need to mention self.x. So self.x is equal to x. And uh, self.y is equal to y. So x and y are the data set that we are going to give. So this will be, so this uh, first column will be x and the second column will be y. So we need to mention that here. And now let's try to implement our gradient descent uh, algorithm for optimization. So implementing gradient descent. So for this, we need to create a for loop. So for for i in range self dot number of iterations self dot update weights okay so self dot update weights parenthesis now what we are doing is we need to create a for loop so that uh, the model does the iteration. So as I have told you earlier, we will mention the number of iterations. So number of iterations means the number of times the model will go through the data. So if we just give the number of iterations as 50, that means it will, uh, the for loop will have a, a value of 50. So the for loop will run 50 times and uh, each time the model will go through the data and 50 times the parameter value will be updated. So that's why we are including this self dot update weights. Now we need to create an, uh, create this update weights parameter, sorry, update weights function. I'll just remove the spaces here. So now we are going to uh, include these formulas. So W is equal to W minus alpha into DW, B is equal to B minus alpha into DW and these two formulas. So we are going to incorporate these uh, four formulas into our update weights function. So uh, now we need to mention Y prediction. is equal to self dot predict self y self dot x so this is the predict function so we haven't done this predict function yet so this this function is here now let's try to uh, you know complete this predict function so this is what we do in class sometimes we will use a function that is uh, that is not yet created yet so now let's try to create this predict function. So define predict self x. So the purpose of this particular predict function is that if you give the value of the number of years of experience, it can uh, calculate the salary of the person. So we just need to give only one parameter. So in this case, the parameter is six, which is the number of years of experience. Now, if you give, give that value, it will try to plug in the value to the formula that we have. So here the linear regression formula is y is equal to wx b, right? So we will try to uh, plug in the values of x in this particular formula and we will try to find the value of y which is salary. So now let's try to uh, you know incorporate this formula to our python code. So define predict which is return x dot dot. So we are creating a dot product of x and w. So self dot w and self dot b. So just look at this particular uh, 
line of code so it is x dot self dot w so it is the dot product so as we know that we have created w or we have created this weight as a numpy array so we need to uh, include numpy multiplication and array multiplication or a vector multiplication so this is the dot product of the two vectors which are x and w so here x is also one vector so x is a 30 cross 1 vector right so we need to multiply this 30 cross 1 vector with the corresponding weight value so it will be x dot uh, self dot w plus self dot b so this is nothing but the formula y is equal to w x plus c if uh, wx plus b so instead of writing this we are just uh, uh, writing this in a different manner as x dot self dot b plus self dot b so the we are including this dot product because this is a, an array now we need to uh, create an array called as y prediction so all the predictions made by your model will be uh, stored in this y prediction and we need to compare the loss function for each different parameters so I'll just uh, write some set of lines of code and then I'll explain you what I'm doing here. So once I complete all of those things, so now we are going to calculate the gradients. So first is dw, so dw is equal to, so you can refer the formula here, which is minus 2 by n summation of xi into yi minus yi prediction. So here n is the number of training examples. So in this formula, the number of training example is represented as n but in the case of r code we have taken the number of training example as m so in this formula you need to replace n by m so it is just a change in the notation so nothing more than that so you just need to replace this n by m so let's try to write this formula in python so dw is equal to minus 2 into self dot x so we need to uh, make a transpose of this x so so that it can multiply with uh, other values so i'll just explain you in a minute i'll just complete this line of code so it's dot t dot self dot y minus y prediction divided by self dot m okay so now just look at this formula so it is minus 2 by n so this uh, uh, i have represented this minus 2 by n as minus 2 whole thing divided by m so here m is the number of training examples so as i told you we have replaced this n by m and now it's xi into yi minus yi prediction so xi is nothing but our capital y which is the number of years of experience so that is uh, written as self dot x so we cannot multiply it directly with this term so we need to find the transpose so we know that it is in the form of uh, 30 into 1 right 30 uh, rows and one column so we need to make the transpose of it so if you take a transpose of it it will be like a, a uh, one row with 30 columns so i'm just creating a transpose of this dot self dot y minus y prediction so this is nothing but y a minus y a prediction where y a is the true salary value and y a prediction is the values predicted by our model so that is the first uh, line and the second line will be db is equal to minus 2 by n this particular formula so this is uh, very simple than this so next will be db so db is the weight or a bias value so db is equal to minus 2 so minus 2 into np dot sum self dot y minus y prediction and this whole thing should be divided by self dot m so m is the okay y prediction divided by self dot m okay so this is the formula given here so this is the formula for db which is minus 2 by n summation of y a minus y a prediction so that's what we have uh, done here so it's uh, uh, 2 minus 2 into n p dot sum self dot y minus y a prediction self uh, dot m so now we need to update the weights so the formula for updating the weight is this particular formula w is equal to w minus alpha into dw and b is equal to b minus alpha into db so we have created this dw and db now we need to update the weights so updating the weights
self dot w is equal to self dot w minus self dot learning rate so which is represented by alpha so learning rate into dw and the next is self dot b is equal to self dot b minus self dot learning rate into db okay so just a second learning rate okay so this is our linear regression model so i'll just run this once and i'll explain you what uh, this entire thing okay now i'll explain you completely how this linear regression model works based on the code that we have done so the first thing that we have uh, done here is initiating the hyper parameters so the in this case the hyper parameters are the learning rate and the number of iterations so learning rate is nothing but the step size that we are choosing so how much step uh, the parameters should change what should be the magnitude of the change in the parameters okay so it should change by a small value or the parameters should change by a large value so that is uh, given by this learning rate which we will manually uh, give some amount of value so this can be 0 0.01 or 0 0.001 and it depends on the model that we use and the data that we have and then we have the number of iterations so if this is the number of times uh, you know the model has to go through the data points so this is also we can set this manually so you can set the iterations as 100 in, in which case the model will go through the data 100 times again and again or you can set this number of iterations to 1000 where your model will go through it 1000 times. So that is the first part. So first is uh, initiating this hyper parameters. The next thing that we need to do is fit our data uh, to the linear regression model. So we have uh, used uh, several models already. So we have used uh, several uh, pre-made models in sklearn uh, a lot. And we used to use this model.fit functions. And then uh, in this case, we are trying to build that fit function. So define fit self comma x comma y. And self is nothing but uh, your instance. So as I've told you, we used to uh, uh, you know write this line as model is equal to logistic regression or a model is equal to linear regression. So that model, so this is uh, self take that value model. So it is nothing but the instance value. So so that is uh, the self value is nothing but the instance value so define fit self comma x and y so x and y is nothing but um, you know the data that we have so in in the example that we have here is so i'll just open this yeah so years of experience and salary here years of experience is x and salary is y so now what we need to do is we need to give both this x and y in order to fit because uh, let, let's go to this curve so if you want to fit the data points to a line, you need to give both the x-axis value and y-axis value. Then only you can plot a, a data point. Otherwise, you cannot, uh, you know, plot a point. So you need two coordinates. You need x-coordinate and y-coordinates to plot this in this x-axis and y-axis. So we need to give both uh, x value and y value. So that's what we are mentioning here. So whenever you are using this fit function, you need to give two values. So one value is x and the other value is y. So in our uh, uh, projects, we have used the function uh, define fit and we will use to give the parameter as x train and y train, right? So these are nothing but x train and y train. So now what we need to do is we need to extract the shape of x. So in the example that we have, so this data set contains 30 data points. So 30 total data points and it contains two columns. Here we have only one feature and one target column. Here salary is the target column and years of experience is the feature. So the number of features that we have here is one. So this one feature is nothing but the years of experience and the total number of data points we have is 30. Now we need to extract this shape. So self.m comma self.n is equal to x dot shape. So when you do this, uh, the shape of your x will be extracted. So in this case, the shape of x is 30 into one, which means 30 rows and one column. So M, M in this case is the number of training example and N in this case is number of features, okay? So that is one main thing you need to take note of. So we are extracting the shape. So the reason we are doing is this data set contains only two columns, but generally the data set that we deal in machine learning will uh, contain 10 features or it may also contain 100 features and so on. So we need to create an array in this case. So let's say that our uh, data set contains 30 features in that case your 
n value will be 30 and let's say that there are about 10,000 data points. So there are 10,000 data points and 100 pieces. So let's say that, so there are uh, uh, totally 1,000 data points and there are 100 features. So in that case, the value of m will be 1,000 and the value of n will be 100, where n is the number of features we have in our data set and uh, m is the number of uh, training examples or the data points that we have. Now we need to initialize the weights and bias. So in our gradient descent curve, I have told you that we will randomly initialize the value, right? So we will randomly initialize the parameter and we will try to uh, come to this global minimum. So this is the point where if we choose this parameter, it has the less loss function, but we cannot find this parameter value directly. So we need to randomly initialize the value and we need to uh, find this gradient descent. So we need to implement this gradient descent algorithm so that uh, the model can find which is the optimum parameter. So the next step is to initiate these parameters. So we initiate the parameters using this uh, line of code, which is self.w is equal to np.0s, self.n and self.b is equal to zero. Now, as I have told you, this particular data set contains only one feature. So here th there is no problem. So here what you can do is you can just uh, instead of writing this np.0. So what you can do is you can just put self.w is equal to zero. So you can do that. But often we don't have data set that has only one feature. So we often have data set that contains many features. So we need to create a numpy array. So if a data set contains 10 columns or 10 features, each of this feature has a separate weight value. Each of this feature has a separate slope value. Hence, we are creating an array for W instead of, uh, you know, just putting W is equal to zero. So we are creating a uh, NumPy array with all the values as zero. And the shape of this NumPy array is given by N, where N is the number of features. As I've told you, each feature will have a separate W value and you need to create a NumPy array based on the number of features we have. So in this case, the number of features is N. So you need to create a NumPy array which contains all the values as zeros and the shape of this array should be N. Okay, where N is the number of features. So that's how you can initiate the values of W. So the uh, parameter, initial parameter values is W and you uh, B. So no matter how many uh, features you have, always the bias will have only one value. So you can just come to this uh, particular equation. So W can be, uh, W size is equal to the shape of X. So if uh, we have 10 features, then we have 10 value for W. But in all the cases, no matter how many features are there, B will be only one value. The bias will be only one value. Hence, we are just uh, putting self.b is equal to zero. So you don't need to create a numpy array because a bias is uh, a single value, an integer value. So we are initiating the bias value as zero, whereas we are initiating the weights value as np.0, which is an array. So that is the next step where, where we are initiating the weights and bias, weight and bias. So this is self.x. So x is nothing but our feature and y is nothing but our salary. So we need to mention that. So this is our next step. Now we need to implement our gradient descent. So gradient descent is something where we will try to reach to this point from this point by uh, comparing the loss function of different parameters. Now let's try to do that. So here we are creating a for loop. So for i in range self dot number of iterations and self dot update page. Now what we need to do is we need to uh, mention the number of iterations so as i've told you if the number of iterations is equal to 100 that means the model will go through the data uh, again and again for 100 times and each time it goes through the data it will try to change the weights and uh, bias it will try to change the parameter value and see whether uh, the loss function value is less or whether the cost function value is less so the loss function and cost function are very similar to each other so you can just call it anything you want so you can use that synonymously now the model will go through the data again and again for these hundred number of times and each time it will change the parameter. It will change the uh, weights and we call this as updating the weights. So for i in range self number of iterations. So for each time it runs through the data, it will update the weights. Now we need to create this update weights function. So that's what we are doing in our uh, third function, which is a defined update weights. So update weights. So like um, here, there is no second parameter. So this is a function that we are using implicitly within this class. So we don't need to give any uh, parameter values in this case, only this self is enough. Okay, now let's see what we are doing here. So inside this update weights, we are creating an array called as y prediction. So y prediction is equal to self dot predict self dot x. Now let's try to understand this. So let's say that we have randomly initialized our weights and bias value and this is the first iteration of our model. For this particular first iteration, the value of weight is a numpy array which contain all the values as zero and the bias value is zero and based on this value, it will create a line, a linear regression model with uh, the weight value as zero and bias value as zero. Now, our model will try to find 
the value of salary the value of y based on the model that it has so in this case the uh, like the model will have uh, the equation of the model will be like something like this 0 into x plus 0 because uh, the weight value is 0 right so we have initiated the weight value as a 0 and the bias value as 0 and y is equal to y is equal to 0x plus uh, 0 where the first 0 represents the weight w and second 0 represents bias value 0. Now what the model will try to do is it will take only this uh, first column years of experience column so that's what we are mentioning here so self dot predict. So now let's come to this predict function. So we have created this predict function here which uh, returns some value so this predict function will return some value and this value is x dot dot self w plus self uh, b which is the equation of uh, the line okay so okay so this is the equation of the line which is y is equal to wx plus b so this particular predict function will return the value of y which is the salary if you give the years of experience now i have just written this particular equation in a simple way in this case now let's come back here so this is the uh, this is what this predict function will do so it will give the value of x to this equation and it will try to find the value of y and all the values predicted by our model will be stored in this array called as y prediction okay so I hope you are clear up to this. So once we randomly initialize the value, once we initialize the uh, weight value and bias value, the model will try to uh, find the predicted values, will try to predict the values. And now it will compare these two values. So you can come to this formula here. So we are subtracting the true values yi minus yi prediction, right? So in this case, the yi prediction is nothing but this array y prediction and yi is the true values true values are the columns in the, the values in the second column so this is the salary value and these are the true values now we need to uh, compare the true value and the uh, uh, estimated value or the predicted value and this is called as the loss function right so now we have yi uh, so yi from this particular uh, data set so we got the yi which is the true value from the data set and y prediction is the value predicted by our model now what happens is once it finds this value it will try to find the values of dw and db so this is the formula for it uh, so dw is equal to minus 2 by n summation of xi yi minus yi prediction so this is how much your parameter value will change so this is the value of dw db and we are implementing these formulas in this uh, two equation so dw is equal to minus 2 into self x dot t and so on so this is uh, this exactly this uh, two equations we have uh, written these two equations here now the model has to update the weights so it will update the weights based on the difference that I have. okay so now we have the true value and we have the predicted value so based on this the gradient descent can calculate what should be the updated weights and this is the formula for updating the weights w is equal to w minus learning rate into dw so yeah this formula so w is equal to w minus this formula and b is equal to b minus alpha into db and we have calculated this db and uh, dw based on our yi the true value and the yi prediction value okay so once it does that it will again come back to this for loop because this is where we have used this update weights right so this process will be continued for 100 iterations so if we give a number of iterations as, as 100 it will try to uh, do this iterations for again and again for 100 times it, and it will try to update the weights for 100 times so this is how linear regression model will work so first of all uh, it will try to get the value of the learning rate and number of iterations from the user and then it will try to uh, randomly initialize the parameter values which are the slope and intercept value and it will uh, you know uh, we have initiated the values with zero and then we try to update the weights based on the difference between the y prediction and the true value and once the number of iterations has complete we will reach a point called as convergence so convergence this is a point uh, beyond which your model cannot perform better so it is the most uh, uh, it is the point where your loss function is very minimum so it, it is the global minimum uh, point so this point is called as convergence and uh, if once your all your iterations are as completed your model will reach that point okay so this is how linear regression model works and i hope you have understood all the things covered in this video so if you don't understand a few things it's completely fine because in the next video what i'll do is so we will take this particular data set and we will try to uh, uh, train our linear regression model with this particular data set and we will try to make predictions so in that case also i'll explain you practically how we will use this data set and how this data set will go through this uh, particular linear regression model and we can make predictions 
So I hope you have understood all the things covered in this particular video. And uh, if you have any doubts, please mention in the comments. And that's it from my side. And I'll see you in the next upload. Thanks for watching.